Welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, April 2nd, uh, 2019. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. A U.S. $50 million loan agreement was signed today between the government of SVG and the Republic of China on Taiwan, paving the way for construction of the Montwin Peters Hope Hotel project. The designs are yet to be finalized by a Mexican contracting design company. Signing on behalf of the government at Cabinet Room was Minister of Finance Camilo Gonzalez, who provided some details on the 250-room hotel, which he said, is expected to boost the room stock in the hospitality sector as well as provided employment for hundreds of intentions. You will see here, um, this is an aerial artist rendition. The rooms are sort of nestled into the trees here. You come out onto the dock and you will see that there's a restaurant sort of out on, on a jetty, if you will. I can show you uh, this this rendering will, show, will will be a better close up of the the hotel um, the of the restaurant uh, out on the water and this one will show the arrival wing and you will see that as you enter it will be sort of open air there will be a lot of use of wood um, and something that is natural uh, in its in its um, design. The restaurant that is not on the sea will be located further back up the hill um, towards the main road, towards the entrance and again something offering you the view of the ocean and a very open environment. This is where you will see the conference center. This is the external area of the conference center and the blocks of rooms will feature uh, use of a lot of wood, um, screens that can be pulled back and forth for privacy over your balconies, and you will see that there are about three floors uh, in most of the blocks for the rooms, with the exception of some cabanas that will be uh, the sort of the VIP luxury rooms that will exist beachfront and there will be individual properties. Um, there's, as I mentioned, there's a sort of a family pool and a separate uh, adult area. The Export-Import Bank of China and Taiwan is a lending institution. Ambassador of the Republic of China on Taiwan to SVG Calvin Ho, who signed on behalf of his government, cited the bilateral agreement with SVG as one that will bring tremendous benefit to the tourism industry. I, I do believe this visionary project is very meaningful because it, it might open uh, a new chapter, uh, start a new phase of the econ economic development of St. Vincent and Grenadine. And also will make this country uh, become one of, of the most attractive tourist places in the Caribbean region, together with the opening of the Argyle International Airport. So I'm so excited that I can, my colleague and I can be involved in this signing ceremony to witness that finally we get to uh, uh, this ground. Tendering will be advertised for a local company to carry out the construction phase of the project, which is expected to be completed in two years' time. Minister Gonzalez said they have not yet arrived at the brand for the hotel. However, it will be from one of the four top hotel brands internationally. Also present at today's signing ceremony was Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. Commenting on the significance of the loan agreement, BM Gonzalez said it negates pessimistic views for taking another loan to burden the country's debt. Anytime we borrow money, you'll have people on the other side saying, well, this will add to the public debt. But this is an asset which you will have. When you go, and you borrow a quarter million dollars to build your house. You just don't have the debt, you have a house. 
which you live in. In the case of the hotel, the assessment was made through a prior study about the break-even point in a very short period of time so that the hotel would pay for itself. Creating provisions that allow for the use of intangible assets to be subject to tax increased capacity of the Inland Revenue Department to counter bad debt claims and tackling transactions designed to avoid liability adjust some of the issues the Income Tax Amendment Act 2019 will seek to address. During his presentation on the bill which was passed in Parliament yesterday, Minister of Finance Camilla Gonzalez said the older provisions for intangible assets only covered royalties allowing companies to find and exploit tax loopholes. He said the amendment will capture a wider range of transactions for intangible assets. List of payments stated within paragraph one of the third schedule of the Income Tax Act, which are subject to withholding taxes to include royalties, licenses, branding fees, and other charges for the use of intangible assets. The above listed category in the current act uh, only has royalties um, as being subject to withholding tax. So we're adding the, the, other, the other elements, the branding fees and others, because again, people are calling one thing by another name in order to avoid taxation. In particular, this amendment targets for inclusion payments made by a resident branch to its overseas head office, which may, under the existing third schedule, escape liability to withholding taxes, given that they may not be termed as royalties, as referenced in paragraph 1.1 of the third schedule. The amendments, therefore, would sufficiently widen the net to include all payments relating to the use of intangible assets by a resident taxpayer as being subject to withholding tax. Minister Gonzalez also explained how the amendment addresses the issue of claims or loan loss and bad debt. The amendment to section 41G and H have the effect of placing the onus on the taxpayer to identify and itemize the specific individual bad debts due to the taxpayer in order to claim the bad debt as a deduction. The current provision lacks the degree of specificity that would have allowed the Inland Revenue Department to counter claims for loan loss or bad debts that were not related to a specific individual account or customer. The breadth of bad debts that were being cited um, for, for, for uh, deduction purposes was far wider than the business in which the person was conducting at any particular time. Um, so there's, there's, an, there's an effort there to tighten that. The finance minister also spoke on how the amendment handles transactions designed to avoid taxes. And finally, Mr. Speaker, transactions designed to avoid liability to tax. The amendments have the effect of clarifying the relationship between two parties engaged in tax transactions to ensure that the price charge for the purchase of products and services is such that exists in open market transactions, thus preventing the transfer of profit outside of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yes, um, purchase for products and services that reflect the open market um, cost of those products and services, thus preventing the transfer of profit outside of St. Vincent and the Grenadines through collusion schemes or arrangements designed to avoid taxation. 
In other news, the ruling Unity Labour Party will be celebrating a number of achievements with the march and rally this Thursday, April 4, 2019. A general secretary of the party, Senator Julian Francis, told SGTV News that while the march and rally is mainly to celebrate the party's 18th year in office, they will also be celebrating the court victory of the election petitions. The NDP has been challenging our position ever since the 2001 election, so that we never won an election. Eventually they got their chance in court and their petitions were thrown out. And the two members of parliament that were being questioned, the Louis for Central Leeward and Montgomery Daniel for North Windward, have been certified and, and verified by the, by the court. So the NDP's petitions were dismissed. And naturally, that adds to our celebration. So that, you know, we won four general elections and court has certified and dismissed any any doubt that were in, in, in the opposition mind. And um, we have taken our supporters on the street like we have done before and um, celebrate our, our anniversary. Thursday's match starts at 2.30 p.m. at the party's headquarters office at Murray's Road and will culminate at Heritage Square for a rally where supporters will hear remarks from a number of speakers. Francis said supporters have many reasons to celebrate the party's 18th year in government. The work that the people have elected us to do, like we have been delivering to the people and our manifesto, that is our Bible. We live according to that, and if you check the manifesto to the projects that are on the ground and are working on right now, you will see that our pass rate is way within the distinction bracket. March around town with our red and banners and flags and other paraphernalia. And then we head to Heritage Square. Labour family. Okay. That's how we do things. The gardens of the Vinsave Child Development Center is home to a wide variety of plant life and the teachers and students there were able to learn some of the many ways they can be propagated. This through a hands-on experience provided by members of the Ministry of Agriculture in the area of pruning and grafting. Director of Vinsave Janice Fraser said the exercise provided a unique and fun learning experience for the students and staff activity is you know very interesting one particularly so not only because it's the month um, they're looking at the team agriculture but over the last year so we have engaged the children and the center in particular in backyard gardening if you look at the back you'll see we have all sorts of plants and so forth so we thought that um, this would help the children and the staff in general in um, getting more information on the whole question of agriculture and the, those um, methods that you use in terms of grafting and ear layering and budding etc. So we we'll continue to try because we we'll ask the children like to bring their own plants and we'll try that with them so that they can take those back to their parents and help in terms of the development of their own gardens and so forth. So basically that was what it's all about broadly speaking. But generally, um, specifically, it has to do with the whole theme this month of agriculture. It's a quite interesting activity this morning, and as you see, the children would have learned quite a bit, and the staff in also, who could use those skills in their own backyards. So thanks for coming. Two teachers shared what they learned from the exercise. This morning was really fun and interesting. You know, I would have learned a lot. Um, about graphing. Actually, this um, this is our topic for um, for the term agriculture. So we were looking at different ways in which plants grow, and so we look at um, by seeds, stem cutting, and so. So this is what it boils down to this week, where we're looking at um, plants grow by graphing. And so we really appreciate the minister coming in and doing this demonstration for us. And I can see that the children would have enjoyed it. Our team and topic for this month is all about plants. So we figured that we always plant in all different stuff. So we wanted to have a little idea as to putting in two different plants to see what is going to happen there. It was very interesting. All it was challenging, but still, I, I learned a lot from it. And I'll be in the future, I'll be able to do it with my children and 
encourage them to do it at home, especially with the flowers. I've never known that you can actually do something like that, but nevertheless, it was good. And it's always a privilege for Ministry of um, Agriculture supporting Vinceve, and we're very much grateful for that. Agriculture Extension Officer responsible for the Dunbatten Agriculture Station, Sydney Sutherland, explained the methods of propagation by which the teachers and students were taught. Doing budding and grafting is just to demonstrate different methodologies in plant propagation because um, in order to get like um, a plant that is producing in a shorter space of time and give you good quality, you need to do um, these type of methods, which is budding and grafting, because we are doing select selected varieties. So you need to do this methodology, these methodologies on the plants. Okay, um, when we say propagation, right, we are talking about um, like getting plants, like um, you doing it from either seed or cuttings from one tree to the other. And these methods involve like um, like cutting some the same tree, as I said, or seed. Okay, so the method that you use is called um, propagation. The Bekwe Isarigata is a key event on the cultural calendar of SVG and Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture, Cecil Sess Mackey, said the continued growth of the regatta will help in the push to make uh, this country a top tourism destination in the Caribbean. The regatta activities are slated to begin on April 18th, with several sailors and sailing enthusiasts coming to these shores. Representatives from the Bekwe Sailing Regatta and the Onshore Committee joined Minister Mackey for a joint news conference today at the Ministry's conference room where the activities for the regatta were outlined. Minister Mackey said the Ministry supports the activities recognizing their importance to SVG's tourism product. In generally, we have seen an improvement in, in those arrivals. Um, we have um, from the government level, uh, we continue, we started last year to offer concessions on the racers that come in so that they don't um, have any fees to pay um, when they come in to race. Um, so we are continuing that this year and I'm sure that we will continue to give that support. That is an uh, added incentive um, for the, 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 the yachts to come, come to race on, on our shores. Um, and we have persons on the ground that continue to um, provide support as well. So when, when persons come, um, the yachties themselves, the racers, and also um, persons who come in for the event, they're able to enjoy um, the scenery, um, Bekwe and St. Vincent and the Grenadines has to offer. They're able to enjoy the, the wonderful beaches um, that are available on Bekwe, and they sometimes they take a, a trip to the other Grenadine Islands as well. Um, our cuisine, um, they visit the restaurants, um, and the, the food um, shops uh, across Bekwe, um, and also the enjoy. The tourism minister said he is encouraged that SVG continues to show positive numbers in arrivals, both by air and sea, and believes this is a sign that SVG has the potential to be the number one tourism destination in the Caribbean. It's the opportunity um, to invite all of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, recognize this as a very important um, tourism activity. Um, you heard from the speakers, um, I have to look on my paper to remember these. Um, we have the race regatta tourism, we have the cultural heritage religious tourism, we have rum tourism, we have flu tourism, and we have high room tourism. What a combination. And we also have media tourism to add to that. Um, so let's take this um, activity out to the world and um, get more persons to come. Um, our numbers in terms of arrivals um, last year continue into the first quarter of this year continue to improve um, on all three um, segments of the tourism, um, which is the cruise um, aspect, the yachting aspect, and also arrivals by air. So I think that um, destinations in Vincent and the Grenadines, we are continuing to improve on our profile, um, moving in the right direction. And as I predicted, five, ten years from now, St. Vincent and the Grenadines would be the talk of the region, um, the number one tourism destination. And this event or these series of events would add um, to that possibility. 
Representative of the SVG Tourism Authority, Natasha Anderson, appealed to community groups to partner with the authority to develop more festivals or cultural events. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Tourism Authority is the agency that is entrusted with marketing the destination both regionally and internationally. And NGOs like the Onshore Committee in Beckway and the Beckway Sailing Club are an integral part of this. Without them, it makes our job a lot more difficult and I must congratulate these, um, these two committees for doing such a wonderful job over the years and they really do make our lives easier because they're very organized. Now, one of the things that we really would like to put out there is that we offer consultancy support to these um, two committees as well as financial support. We work along with the groups um, so that we can guide them wherever they need to. And one of the things I would also like to um, pinpoint here is that we would like more community groups to be like the Onshore um, Committee and the Beckwith Sailing Club and become just as organized and reach out to us so that we could work with you to develop more festivals to make the destinations in Vincent and Grandines even better. This year's Beckway Easter Regatta will feature several cultural, religious, and sporting activities. Chairman of the Beckway Sailing Regatta, Chris Key, and acting chairperson of the Onshore Committee, Rochelle Tannis, spoke at today's news conference of some of the activities patrons can expect. Of course, the regatta itself, uh, I think, in my opinion, uniquely, is in fact uh, two regattas running in parallel. Uh, we have the yachts, uh, to, if you like, uh, the conventional regatta, racing over the four days of Easter, Good Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Easter Monday. Uh, but we also have, running in parallel with the yachts, a series of races for the traditional fishing boats. Uh, Beckway has got a unique uh, and, 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 and a wealth of cultural heritage in boat building and, and sailing and fishing. And uh, the sailing club is pleased and proud to be able to run uh, in parallel with the yachts a whole series of races for the double enders. Uh, these races are held across the island from uh, South Side Padgett Farm through to Admiralty Bay and around the island and um, uh, will provide a spectacle for uh, all visitors to Beckway from wherever vantage point they happen to be. Uh, so again this year looking, looking at uh, the, the Easter coming uh, we expect to be another successful year. It ends on Thursday, the 18th of April, with the gospel concert. The theme of that is also the resurrection, the greatest miracle, where we'll be looking at the greatest miracle that was ever performed, which we believe, and everybody I'm sure would believe, it's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we want to make sure that as we go through our Easter celebrations, we keep the focus of what is the true meaning of Easter. Mm -hmm. That is in collaboration with the churches on the island, the local churches, as well as the, the Beckway um, Gospel Fest Committee. On Friday, we will have the Good Friday Swim Meet in conjunction with the Rising Star Swim Club. This will be a series three, um, three swim meets that will take place between the main jetty and Franchipani starting at 10 a.m. Evan Sanchez National is the first person from the Commonwealth to win the Royal Navy Senior Chef of the Year Award. Leading chef Alexis Jones won the award from among hundreds of chefs in the Royal Navy. He was named top chef by the historic livery company responsible for the trade, the Worshipful Company of Cooks. Jones has been a chef in the Navy since 2002 and last year he was selected as one of the senior services participants in the Forces 2018 Annual Catering Championship joined caterer.